Hey, this is Hell Hades. It's another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today I'm jumping into Trump Alicia's account and uh, trying to help him deal with the clan boss. So he's currently on a nightmare clan boss fight and he's been doing between sort of 9 and 12 million damage. He's asked for me to come in and, and help him with how to speed tune a team. Um, so we've got here a good set of champions uh, Warlord, Bad L, uh, Steel Skull, Tyrell, Skull Crusher, all brilliant clan boss champions. Um, and then if we look at the sort of wider roster, he's actually got a really good setup here. So he's got, um, you know, Scott Kosis, he's got Morley, Shamrock, um, Queen Eva, who would be a really good campaign farmer. Um, he's got a Cult Brawler as a sort of backup poisoner if you're doing for a different sort of composition. He's got a Cold Heart coming up. So in terms of sort of fundamental pieces, he's, he's got a really good account for coming in. And I'd say two key in clan boss relatively quickly providing we've got the right masteries and there's some gear here I think we can probably do um, a good job I think within the next sort of two three hours I should be able to take this this setup and and get that going for him well, he's got other champions here you know like Harvest Jack, Cupidus, Lord Champfer it's just just some good backup champions which should be able to help with other content in the game as he levels up but um, yeah as always it's, it's now about just making sure that the team can do what we need it to do so I think if we start with Warlord I mean the first thing I notice is he's really fast and for some content in the game that's useful Warlord's a really good champion for extending debuffs um, and placing shields but for me it's, it's if, if you go with a speed tuned composition then we need to drastically reduce the speed of what this Warlord's got um, and actually we need to make him a bit tankier so if I look here at his gloves, he's got HP gloves, that's good. Um, we could go HP or defense. I'd recommend going defense on one of these two items. Um, so let's see his chest, I'd imagine his HP as well, looking at these stats. Um, we can't really be as low on defense as that. So yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, so a good chest piece, but again, it's, it's HP. But because we've got the speed here, we might actually be able to re remove these boots and swap them for defense boots. So we get the defense in another way and still hit the speed requirements of clan boss which is 171 to 190 um, and what that'll do is it'll make his survivability much better and sort of keep him in line with where the counter attack comes from so uh, yeah i mean the other stats here are probably already pretty decent really to survive a long time in clan boss um, so it, it it just comes down to gearing really Um, so yes, yeah, so let's just come out of this, and if I just consider then um, what we're going to do. So we've got a, we've got a campaign farmer here. I don't think there needs to be much work done there. She's got the right sort of stats. We're not seeing sort of flat stat um, attack or, or what have you. And just looking at her abilities, I think she's actually the best campaign farmer in the game. She's got this A3 that attacks all enemies, and basically she gets this skill back if she kills somebody so she pretty much walks through the campaign on brutal and just uses her a3 right right away uh, right along the way so really good farmer i've not actually used her myself but i know she's probably top end if not the number one campaign farmer so um so we've got no problems there uh, i think trumpelicious does need a bit of help with spider and with finite um I'm not sure if we have time to do that today, but let's see if we can get this clan boss to a good place first, and then we can uh, see where we get to. Let me just think a second. So I guess we need to just have a bit of a look at Skull Crusher. So Skull Crusher, um, this, this is quite a good little tip. So if you look at his ring he's wearing right now, he's in an attack ring, but he got a defense roll. And I was just looking at another piece of gear here, which is a defense ring, but with HP on it. And actually, as it stands at the moment, the ring's slightly worse because the defense is going to be lower. But overall, as you start to roll that ring, the the defense ring can only get better, whereas the attack ring can can actually not add any more value to Skull Crusher. So this is a good example of kind of min-maxing of gear. When you start to think it through, he's actually wearing the wrong piece. And I think this is one that, that will swap out and just kind of roll up to level 12 um, 
just to gain an extra few points of stats. So ideally, you'd love to roll it to 16, you'd love to roll everything to 16, but we're just going to make sure that we've got the sort of base elements rolled up to 12, and then things like boots, chest, gloves, and potentially banners rolled up to 16. Okay. So let's put that on and let's start to upgrade it to 12. And as you see, the stats now start to come in. Um, yeah, and as I said before, this then becomes the better option as a ring. Um, what I've noticed is actually uh, we've rolled attack, which is not helpful. But even with that attack roll, it still becomes the better option because we've now got the base, stat, uh, base stats on the ring as overtaken where we were with defense before. So little improvements like that. When you're building someone for clan boss, you know, this is another example, you can roll that to 12 and, and you're only going to benefit because it's a defense amulet. Um, and yeah, and it's already got good stats in terms of like a bit of crit damage. We don't want accuracy on a, an amulet for skull crusher. So this is a good example of how you can start to build up tankiness in a team where you've got some really nice speed rolls. So we've got here Warlord. Warlord's going to be the buff extender and he's going to create shields for this clan boss team. He was already, um, he was really fast. He was running at about 220 speed. So what I, what I want to do is pull all of their speeds down between 171 and 190, which meant what to do is just slap a pair of defense boots straight on him. This means that he becomes way tankier. He's still got massive HP actually still fast he's still probably too fast the accuracy is good everything about this stat setup now is is 10 times better than it was when he was 225 speed without with speed boots on so this guy is good to go um, you actually ideally want your your debuff extender to be slowest next to your um, counter attacker so ideally I want to take a bit more speed out of this yet and probably what I'm going to end up doing I think he's got really good speed rolls on this chest yeah so I'm probably going to end up throwing this on somebody else pulling that extra 15 out and perhaps swapping it to something which is a bit closer um, yeah I pretty much want to take about 12 speed off him so I'll play around with it see what where I get to but you kind of get the idea defense boots if you can make them work in your team setup do it. Defense boots will make a big difference to how long you last in a clan boss fight. Um, and ideally, you want you're going to go defense boots on somebody. You want it to be on somebody who is way below the defense of your kind of tankier guys, because that way all your guys will kind of last at the same point of the fight. And that's the idea. You want to keep everyone going. As soon as you start losing one or two opponents of your team, generally the whole team will fall down. So. As I said, I'm speed tuning it to Nightmare, which is 171 to 190. Uh, if I start with the counter attack, guys, so Gold Crush is our counter attack. Hit nicely at 171. 3.8k defense, which is really tanky. 37k HP, which is, again is good. I don't want the accuracy to be high. It's probably higher than I want, but that's actually coming through the Great Hall rather than gear, really. Um, if he hits, he's going to hit for a reasonable amount, but that's not what he's there for. So. If I just give you a view, he's my only person I'm going to be sitting here in lifesteal gear. Everyone else is going to be in normal gear because Bad L, Warlord and Steel Skull are all going to be healing for me. Um, but Skull Crusher will take a hit in that second wave so I need him to be in lifesteal. Um, if I then go on to my defense down attack down champ which is Tayrell. Tayrell is running at 176 speed so a bit faster than Skull Crusher. Um, you'll see here I've got him in defense boots, defense chest, HP gloves. If I had defense gloves in this account that I could find, he would be in defense gloves as well. That's how important defense is. Uh, I made sure his accuracy is above 220 so that he definitely lands that attack down. Uh, I've got him to the right speed, I've built the defense up, and then the rest has got him HP. So I actually got a nice banner on this guy. Nice mainly because of the speed. I don't really want the attack, but accuracy is good, speed's good, so that helps a lot. Tayrell's in good shape. I then look at Bad L. Bad L again is at 180 speed, so a bit quicker. 
to lay the poisons down before everyone starts to send buffs. Um, so I've got him in, you've guessed it, defense boots, HP chest. If I had a defense chest, he'd be in a defense chest, defense gloves, um, got the speed to the right place. I'd prefer probably a bit more crit rate, but I haven't got the gear to do it. And I'd prefer a bit more crit damage because he heals as he does his ability. But the main thing he's there for is to land those poison and uh, and yeah and keep the team topped off basically. So he's in good shape. Look at Warlord. So Warlord is a 176 speed. Good accuracy. I need the accuracy so that he extends debuffs. Pretty good defense. Good HP. Uh, so Warlord is in fence boots, chunky ones, HP chest, HP gloves. The reason why he's got more HP is because his second ability, protection of gods, buffs all allies for one turn with block debuffs. So places a shield, 30% of this champ's max HP on all allies for two. Also res restores um, allies HP by 25%. It's a really cool ability. It helps so much on clan boss. Who's a healer, plus he's whacking down a massive shield, and the higher his HP, the bigger that shield gets. Do still need some defense on him, otherwise he becomes quite squishy. So although he's got a high HP pool, the um, clan boss will still just completely nuke him down. So basically, on him, I've got a HP ring. Uh, this is an attack amulet, actually. I'd rather have a HP amulet. Uh, HP, but I do need the reason why this is on there's got me that accuracy which I wanted here. Um, let's have to stay for now. But in the future, if um, yeah, if, if Trump can get a HP amulet that works, he'd be better off doing that. So he's looking pretty good. Um, last person is Steel Skull for the team. Steel Skull, I've had to go with speed boots because I didn't have the right setup to get him in defense as well. But I have got a good defense roll on those speed boots, so that's not too bad. Uh, he's the quickest out of everybody. Get those poisons down, but he's still under the cap. So he's still going to be going in sync with the counter-attack champ. Um, his, his accuracy is way too low. Way too low. Uh, I don't... So far he's not ascended. He needs to get that next level of ascension. There is an accuracy banner waiting for him, which would push the accuracy up to about 180 which is about the right level, but probably still a little bit low. So there's a bit of work to be done on this guy. Uh, maybe I could even, if we got some accuracy gear instead, I don't need him to be as fast as this. Could even just see if there's some stuff I could switch out. That's pretty nice. That's that one. Yeah, that's better. That's better. So ready. If I've then got a shield as well, just make sure I'm not losing much speed that's the thing I would actually 179 now yeah and this is the thing with min maxing so actually that was uh, unless I've got something with better speed plus to two what I'd normally do so I can I can go in here and think well this is an option roll to level 8 and just see if I hit speed twice or even on the first one yes yeah, so I've hit speed once basically need to hit it again for this to be an option for me didn't I hit accuracy so it, I mean it turns out that's actually a nice piece anyway it's not like we're gonna have to bin it but um, that's gonna slow me down and then I look at the shield and what's running on the shield nine speed so I basically need to have a piece that roll speed um, and probably what I would do normally is something like this and just roll it to 12 that's a good anyway we're not going to be binning this it doesn't matter what Anything I roll here is good. The idea is I'm hoping that something comes in here at speed so that I can use this piece of accuracy gear and sort of so that's actually turned out really nice rolls. Um, if this rolls in speed then uh, the gods of RNG are smiling on me as I'm recording and, uh, and we can kind of move things up but if not then yeah we'd have to go back to that speed item. The other thing which I'd say is if if Trump was oh Gods of RNG, how are we feeling today? How are we feeling today? This is, I should be on arena, not not doing this. Uh, right, so there we go. So we put that one in. Nice. So we're still at the 174. So we're still faster than Skullcrusher. It's not perfect. I could probably do about another three or four speed, but actually 
take it. Um, so I can now roll that one up. I might even get another speed roll here. Be even better. And it's then it is perfect. But what I'm saying is, if Trump had been running his faction wars daily, I'd have been able to come into this enchant piece and just put a few plus ones on the speeds where I need to tweak them. And that's generally what you want if you're preparing for something like this, a complete change to your setup. Get yourself some glyphs, just farm glyphs, leave them there, store them up, and then after a few days you'll be able to make these sort of changes much easier. Um, so we just want now that speed roll to come in. Oh, oh, can you believe it? Can you believe it? Um, I actually think every time I change my gear, I should board myself because I get what I want. So now we're, we're in better shape. So at 165, we've got a banner still to come. I can't get that till Monday because it's green ascension. Um, and then the last thing to do then with this comp is to get Steel Skulls marshes out. So Trump had got the, I think he's bought the scrolls from here to set it up. So I can get a bit more accuracy anyway. Um, but basically the uh, two A1 hitter. So any two A1 hitter want to follow, or single A1 hitter, want to follow this. Anyone you're going to be putting in clan boss that's a single A1 hitter, that's your path. Then, depending on what you want to do with them, you then pick a different support tree. So, if I had, uh, if I was confident Warlord would continuously uh, extend buffs, I would go in the defense tree. But Warlord can be a bit hit and miss, so I'm actually going to go for higher accuracy. All of these abilities I've just taken there are all accuracy based. I could go here and get more speed and accuracy. I think I am actually, so it will give me a little bit more accuracy, which is what I want. Um, and if you see here, as a 30% chance to extend the duration of any debuff cast by this champion by one turn. Basically, when he poisoned, I will get an extra turn 30% of the time, which is helpful as well. You want those. So that's the. All of these are the critical things, and then the rest of it is kind of just nice to haves. Um, so, nice ones over here. So this one increases damage when attacking with 4 HP. I should be 4 HP most of the time, so that will just pick my damage up a bit. Um, I don't want any of these turn meter things, because I want this comp to be able to run auto. The whole point of speed tuning is you don't want to start taking all of this stuff. Um, sniper is good, because I get an extra 5% chance of landing my, my A1 with poison. I'm going to take that. Uh, and then normally what I do is I finish off by doing this, so I heal a little bit when I attack when I'm low health. It helps me, it's like a, a mini life steal. And this one here inflicts more damage for dead allies. Not really that good. None of these are really that good for clan boss now. This one's good outside of clan boss, so I'm going to take this for Trump. Okay, so here's masteries are done. I haven't checked everyone else's masteries actually, so do a quick check. But yeah, so warlords are not finished. That's that's a problem in terms of damage output. Um, it looks like it's going down the right route. Warlord would want healing and shielding masteries, which is what he's doing here. But to not have giant slayer or war master on your land boss team is a mistake. If I look at this here, this is a, a big mistake as well. So when you're speed tuning a, a team, um, I'm going to re-roll this. I, I, I've got a reset for free, so I'm going to do this for him. Um, when you're speed tuning a team like we are here, you don't want any of that turn meter gain stuff on. So you've basically got to take all of that off. So same thing again. Bad L's got a single target. Actually, it's an AOE target, A1, but it's only one hit. So all of that comes off. Um, we're going to go with the accuracy again here. It's going to be a really similar tree to Steel Scroll. That. I do want that. That. Take that because he's it's really useful in, in all PVE and bad L can pretty much be used everywhere in the game. I don't want any of those. Uh, we're going to same again. And same again. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. Bad L's in good shape. Warlord's not in good shape in terms of masteries, but is on everything else. So. Russia, right, so he's taking defensive masteries here, which is the right thing to do. Now, in terms of masteries for Skull Crusher, he's missing an important one. Doesn't have enough scrolls yet. This ability here 
is really important. So this ability to counterattack when you lose health, that's why Skullcrush is in lifesteal gear. So every time he loses 25% of his HP, he has a 50% chance of going back and hitting the clan boss. And pretty much if he does that hit, he will get back to full health. So that is a needed mastery for Gold Crusher, which Juice is going to have to work on. Aurel, got it. See, so he's got that same ability, and it looks like he's in shape. Same thing, defensive mastery, and steel skull. Okay, so all in reasonable shape. Bit of work to do on Skull Crusher, a lot of work to do on Warlord, but I feel like we're ready. Go. Oh. So let's get ourselves a clan boss fight. Right, keys ready into nightmare. So as, as we remember, we were doing around nine. Um, what, he got a sink. Yeah, so we're doing somewhere between nine and thirteen million before. See where we land. Before he was using this composition. So main change here then is I'm taking out OB at the cult brawler. I put an still goal. Uh, right here we go um, so we should see OB actually is, is really good in terms of laying down those poisons between the two of them there's, there's probably he's more reliable for poisons he's more reliable for stain in the team so let's see how we do I'm not going to alter it just yet but I could auto this I could alter this and it would run in sync um, but I just want to show you the setup. So basically double poison from our um, bad L. Try and lay down some poisons with dual skull. Didn't get any. Um, Warlord there is basically there to extend debuffs. If I could just A1 for the first half of the fight, I would. For a row, I'll start with defense down. Because on this counter attack, there's a good chance I'm going to lay my attack down anyway. See there, so we run through and we're now up to four debuffs. Now, what you want is you want Warlord to be extending those debuffs as often as possible, and you also want Steel Skull to actually land some poisons. You see there, increased debuffs, so they're all now ticking up every time he does that, they tick up another level. The reason why speed tuning is so good is because we always get two counter attacks, always. And two counter attacks means you just get more chance to land those debuffs, you get more chance for Steel Skull to land his poisons. Um Danny one at last, yeah. So and that's what you want. You want for the warlord to be hitting day one as often as he possibly can. As the fight gets later, certainly if you're manualing, then you would be using Warlord Day 2. Never use Warlord Day 3. You see here that the, the speed tune means that Bad L has always got his cleanse up at the right time for when somebody's got a stun. If I was on auto right now, this would happen anyway, which means you always get your turns and you do more damage. Nobody's missing out on turns. This is where Warlord's not consistent, so some debuffers, you know, we're going to lose a load of debuffs here, whereas on some debuffers, it just continuously keeps flicking up. I've got Vizier on my account, and I mean he's insane for it. You never get debuffs dropping off with Vizier. Um, a lot of people were like, Warlord's the answer to the world. Well, he's actually very inconsistent. Um, but saying that, he's still an amazing champion. So when he is landing, when he's, when they're all rolling, it's amazing. But there's a, a lot of time that they don't. So you, see, you get the idea. Um, basically what we do is we run this through. And it's, I mean, I would advise with this team set up, that you'll get a lot more damage if you manual um, but obviously you can auto if you just want to run it through and you'll get good damage anyway the reason why you get more damage if you manual is because you're controlling Warlord and Warlord is the, the kind of main problem with this setup because if he's not, if he's using these other two abilities early which he would do, you've got more chance of losing all the debuffs you're going to lose a load here again and that's with me manualing so you know, imagine if I was just letting this play out, he wouldn't have won as often as he has right now. He's only got about a third, I think it's 30% chance of extending debuffs with his A1. Got it there, so it's almost like you're hoping for that clutch extension every time with Warlord. And um, as I say, a lot of people think Warlord is the answer to Clan Boss, or definitely used to. And 
although he's very good, insanely good, he's also distant. Anyway, look, I'm going to cut here, come back when we're near the end of the fight, and show you how we're getting on. One thing I just wanted to share, so we're not much further on than when I just pause the video, but I've got us up to 10 debuffs here, and Warlord was extending debuffs. The great thing then is that actually having a Steel Skull rather than an old Occult Brawler, Steel Skull can put this defense up, and, it, and it's a heal at the same time. So that's why Steel Skull is the better option than Occult Brawler, because once I've got my 10 up, actually his, his A1 damage isn't very much, and I'd rather start to use his ability. It's also a backup for a cleanse and a big heal, but we're not needing that yet. But you see there, there's no, there's no poisons to apply right now. They've got no space, and Warlord is hitting some um, extensions here, so we're we're kind of pushing through nicely. This is almost like perfect scenario, providing Warlord keeps hitting, because I can use Steel Skull to his full ability. Hit again there, see. So we're in good shape. Uh, as I say, I'll come back shortly. I just wanted to share that point. Okay, so we've come in there. What 19.9 million? So we're just about on for a two key nightmare, which is what we're after, really. Um, that's with Warlord. Uh, he hasn't got the, the right mastery on to hit the clan bossard. What's it called? Got a complete mental block. He doesn't have Warmaster yet. So if he'd got Warmaster on there, that damage would be considerably more. Uh, he would have probably got to himself to about 2 million, which would have pushed us up to about another 2 million on the key. Um, so if you see here, we want to need to get over 39 million as a 2 key hit. 19.9 it would definitely be a two key comp um, so you go I guess it shows you, um, you know, pretty much doubled the damage of Trumpalicious just by speed tuning putting these guys in defense boots making sure they're wearing the right gear um, and yeah look not everyone's gonna have Warlord not everyone's gonna have Bad L that's helpful in this team comp but it's not the only reason that they're doing well it's well put together got an attack down, you've got a healer, you've got a healer and a defense up, two poisoners, an extender, um, and a counter attacker. So there's a number of people that do all of those jobs well. This is a nice team setup. It's similar to what I had around this sort of time when I was playing the game. But as you can see, just a well-tuned team basically just doubled his damage.